Good morning. Thanks for hopping on. I'm so glad you're here. I want to give you a few brief nuggets just to help jumpstart your day. Come on in the room. Take your shoes off. You know how I like to do it. There's some milk, orange juice, coffee, cappuccino, eggs, bacon, donuts. All that good stuff is over in the next room. Grab yourself a plate. Get yourself something to drink. And I'll be right here waiting for you. This is a fantastic, fabulous Friday. Oh, yes, it is. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we want to rejoice and be glad in it. I know you love your spouse, your children, your neighbors, your parents, your co-workers, your friends at church, your friends in the organization. You love the CEO. You love the COO. You love the district manager, the floor manager. You love all of those people, and they do have titles, and those titles are important, and they do have power. But they don't have the power to make a day. Only God can do that. Yes, only God can make a Friday. He's God all by himself. So you can go ahead and take your hands off the wheel and let him have it this morning. He has everything under control and he's going to give you a smooth landing. They laughed at your crucifixion. Oh, yes, they did. But I want to know what are they going to do about your resurrection because you are going to get back up again. You're not going to stay in that spot always. I know. I know that life can be difficult and you'd rather be on the mountaintop than in the valley. But listen, there are lessons to be learned at every phase of your life. Yes, indeed. Sometimes you're in a winter phase. Sometimes you're in a summer phase. Sometimes you're in the spring phase. Um, and all those seasons are important, but don't forget about due season. That's when you get everything that's due to you, but you got to hold on. You got to tie a knot and hold on and don't give up. I'm grateful this morning, thankful for the train that didn't derail, the boat that didn't sink, and the plane that did not crash. When you and I were asleep last night, dead to this world, didn't know what was going on, God sent an angel. Oh, yes, he did. He says, wake her up. She's on a mission. She has an assignment. I have something for her to do. Sometimes what you're going through is not even for you. It is for somebody else. But God uses you as a vehicle, as a vessel. So I don't want you crying this morning. No pity parties this morning. That's the loneliest party in the world. Nobody's there but you and the devil. So I want you to get up. Put, put your boots on. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. And if you're tired, if you feel exhausted, overwhelmed, and you can't run this morning, perhaps you can walk. If you can't, if you can't walk, maybe you can crawl. If you're too tired to even crawl, maybe you can scoot. <laughs> All you need to do is just move. Move to get to the next destination. I appreciate you being here this morning. We are live and in color. If this is your first time, please don't let it be your last time. And if you happen to stop by later during the day, just type in replay in the comment bar and that'll let me know <clears throat> that you were here. I want to thank you for liking, sharing, and commenting. I do go back and read all of your comments. I want you all to know that this has been some kind of week. So if I missed your comments, I do apologize. It's been me during this show, off to Dallas turnaround trip back home again me during the show off to San Antonio turnaround trip back home again me doing the show off to Austin turnaround trip back home again that has been my week it has been some kind of week <laughs> I've done some traveling this week so if I've missed you in some kind of way charge it to my head and not to my heart I will go back and make sure that I've tried to respond to everybody Listen, if this is your first time, please, I say again, don't let it be your last time. You are important, and I'm so glad that you were here. I want to thank you for liking, sharing, and commenting. Everything that you say means a lot to me. Why? I'm glad you asked, because iron sharpens iron. I'm encouraged by the words that you say uh, and the information that you give out. Listen, if you get any bad news today, on this Friday... On this blessed Friday, if you get any bad news today, I want you to click return to sender and send it back. We're not having that. We're not going to have it today. You have a trash can somewhere outside. Take all the gossip, the envy, the rivalry, the strife, the speculation, the conjecture. Take all of that, dump it in the trash can, and leave it out there. The trash men are going to come and pick it up, or the trash women, they're going to come and pick it up at some point during the week. But I don't want you to leave it in your house. 
No, no, no. Look up at that plaque you have on the wall. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. I want you to truly mean that. Yes, indeed. I want you to serve notice to everybody that you come in contact with that you serve an awesome God. Yes, you do. You serve an awesome God, and he's God all by himself. He does not need us. He does not need us. We need him. We are but filthy rags in his sight, but he knows how to clean us up. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for every victory, and I hope you are too. Whatever your victory is, I don't care how small it is, it's yours. It's yours. You and your family had a family reunion this summer. For the first time, everybody got along and there was no argument. That's a victory. Yes, in this day and time, that is a victory. Yeah. You watched the news last night. And you saw kids who were getting in trouble. None of them were your children or your grandchildren. That's a victory. You've done something right. That's a victory. You've decided that you want to go back to school. You wasn't able to get your GED for whatever reason, your high school diploma. But you want to go back now and do that. We're rooting for you. We're supporting you. You can do it. You can do it. And we want to see you do it. That is a victory. Yeah. So many marriages are ending in divorce and separation. Um, and yours, yours, God has placed his stamp of, of approval on it, and you're still together. That is a victory. Yeah. And let me tell you something while I'm on this subject. Mothers, I know sometimes you don't understand, but I would rather see your daughters come back home than for you to have to view them in a casket. Yeah. Yeah. You got to really listen to your children to find out what's going on. And a lot of times we try not to tell you stuff because we don't want you to worry. But when, when your daughter or your son is crying out because they are being abused, abandoned, neglected, something is going on, really hear them. And I would rather them come back home and to start over than for you to view them in a casket. Every morning I watch the news, I'm hearing stories of domestic violence. Yeah. The days are gone <laughs> when folk are saying you're supposed to stay there and take that. No, you're not supposed to be abused. Hit, pushed into a refrigerator, knocked around. None of that. None of that. So really listen to your children and even your grandchildren. They have a story to tell. Service is the price we pay for the space we take up here on earth. So I hope and pray to God that you are being of service to somebody. Yes. Just keep on thanking him for all that he's doing. I want to ask God to do what I always ask him to do on every call. To help somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody, restore somebody, change somebody's mind, give somebody another chance, set somebody free. Sometimes that's all we need is somebody to give us another chance. Yeah. We, we hard on each other. We quick to write each other off. But I'm so grateful that that is not the nature of Jesus Christ. Yeah. He goes after us. Yeah. Chases us down with his love. Yeah. And if we'll come to him, he'll come to us. Yeah, that's the kind of God that we serve. He, he, he shows us the same love that the prodigal son's father showed him. He does not get tired of us. He loves us continuously. Somebody on this call may be on the verge of a nervous breakdown. And if that's you, if you're on the verge of a nervous breakdown, instead of a breakdown, I want to ask God to give you a breakthrough. I want him to come through for you this morning. I know he will. I know he will, and I know he can. Yeah. Sometimes life can be awfully pressing. And I'm not trying to make light of that. Life can be pressing. Family problems. Financial problems. Uh, career, job related problems. Problems in the neighborhood. Problems at the church. Problems everywhere. But I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Jesus is bigger than all of our problems. Yeah. In fact, he is a problem solver. Yeah. He's a chief strategist. He's a change agent. And don't be afraid. Whatever it is, I don't care how silly, how juvenile, whatever it is, you can go to him. Yeah. 
And even if you're praying and it doesn't sound like it's coming out right, he knows how to fix it before it gets to the Father. Yeah, and they understand jointly, clearly what you have tried to articulate. I'm grateful for a God like that. I just want you to keep on pressing. There's a blessing in pressing. I want you to keep on pressing this Friday. Don't give up. Yeah, don't give up. Let me go ahead and acknowledge you. That's one of my favorite parts. Sister Penny Ross says, good morning, sisters. Good morning, Sister Penny. So glad you were here. I got a lot of things going on, but I'm going to call you. Yes, indeed. I'm going to call you uh, Sister Penny Rouser. In fact, she was the first one on the call today. So glad to have you. Giovanna Russell says, good morning. Happy Friday. We made it another week. Oh, yes, we did. Robin Taylor says, good morning. Ethel Barnett says, good morning, sisters. Sherry Umana says, morning. Sylvia Brown says, good morning. Uh, Marjorie Malone says, good morning, everyone. Jennifer Catchin says, TGIF, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Carla Williams Douglas says, good morning, my sisters. Amanda M. Kidd says, blessings. Sister Ira Booker says, good, faithful Friday. Sandra Jones says, good morning, be blessed. Penny Rouse says, I'm so thankful for this morning's ministry. And we, we are thankful for you. Chris Carnett says, good morning. Thanking God for this Freedom Friday. Um... And my screen jumped. <laughs> Chris Carnett, thank you so much. Praying for God's protection today. Ethel Barnett says, God has smiled on me. That's a blessing. He has set me free. Oh, yes. I remember singing that song when I was a little girl. Marilyn Wardlaw says, good morning. Marilyn, thank you. I did get your blessing. Yes, indeed. Thank you for blessing this ministry. You don't know. Uh, you don't know what that does uh, for me. When we have more, we can do more. It allows me to help uh, other people, and I'm grateful for that. No matter how big or how small, it blesses me. I'm telling you, Marilyn, this week, <laughs> this week, you seen me on the show. I didn't make it yesterday because I didn't get back in time. But I'm telling you, it's been Houston, Dallas, back, San Antonio, Houston, back, Austin, Houston, back. But I'm able to bless other people. Because I have people like you who are blessing me. Yeah. I'm able to help uh, other women all around the world. And I'm grateful for your gift. Sister Ira Booker says, uh, celebrating today, God woke me up. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. What a blessing. Sister Ira, can you imagine what would have happened if he had not woke you up? The world would not have been the same. Everything this morning would be different for your family and for your friends at work and in the community and at church if you had not woken up. God knows what he's doing. He woke you up this morning. Elder Marguerite Coleman says, good morning, Queens. We're so glad to have you. Harriet Ware says, good morning. Ira Booker says, I'm so thankful. I am full of thanks. Oh, yes, I feel that thanksgiving. Sister Ira says, thank you, Joey Raspberry, for encouraging us. And thank you, Sister Ira, for uh, for you encouraging us. Uh, Rebecca Woodard says, for uh, praying for a breakthrough. Thank you, Lord, for being my problem solver. Lord, would you, would you give Sister Rebecca Woodard the breakthrough that she needs? And thank you for being her problem solver. In fact, we all need a breakthrough. Uh, just give us all a breakthrough this morning. Giovanna says, we'll keep right on pressing today. Oh, yes, do that. Kendra Dublin says, good morning. Good morning, Kendra. So glad to have you here. I didn't forget. We'll get together. Tiffany Tonsil says, good morning. Good morning to you. Ethel Barnett says, our God is a way maker and a burden bearer. Yes, and a heavy load carrier. I don't care how heavy your load is, he can carry it. Elder Marguerite Coleman says, they found my 39-year-old niece deceased in her apartment Wednesday. Please keep the Coleman Henderson family in prayer. We are so sorry, Sister Elder Marguerite Coleman. We are praying for you and your family. Um, we will be sending you something. Uh, Chris Carnett is on call, so I know she'll catch that. Uh, we'll be sending you something for your family. I think I may have already have your address. If not, then uh, privately just send it to me. Um, we're so sorry. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. We thank him. Um, 
for the life of your niece for the 39 years that she was here. Um, we may not understand what is going on, but God will make it clear um, and we'll understand it better by and by. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal and we're trusting God to heal your family. Terry Esco says, good, fabulous, fantastic, faithful Friday morning. That was like a tongue twister. I need to say that again. Good, fabulous, fantastic, faithful Friday morning. Thank you for that, Terry. We appreciate that. Um, they're praying, Sister Marguerite, for your family. On behalf of your niece, Kendra says, amen. Uh, Marilyn Watloss is praying for the family of Sister Elder Marguerite Coleman. Sister Iris says, yes, glory, Father. Thank you for your mercy of life in Jesus' name. Amen. Jennifer Ketchers is praying for the Coleman family. Chris Carnett says, praying for you, Marguerite and family. Uh, Chris, we're going to get on top of that right away, okay? Javonna Russell says, praying for you and your entire family. We're praying for our dear sister, Sister Marguerite Coleman, on the loss of her 39-year-old niece. We're just asking God to to come through and heal your broken hearts. Many of you know the story of Cinderella. Well, once upon a time, it was a girl named Cinderella, and she had a stepmother and two stepsisters. Uh, her mother had died, and her father had remarried. Poor Cinderella, I tell you. She worked hard all day <laughs> trying to um, clean and keep the stepmother happy and keep the stepsisters happy. Um, but when people are being evil, no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to make them happy. But Cinderella was a a young girl, and uh, she did the best she could with the cooking and the cleaning and um, setting the fire to the fireplace. Uh, but it was a it was a real mess at what she had to go through. But there's so many lessons. Uh, that I've learned in all of this, but I want to focus this morning on the the Cinderella syndrome is what I call it. Um, the two sisters were preparing to go to a ball and uh, Cinderella wanted to go and when she acknowledged that she wanted to go, they kind of mocked her and said, you? <laughs> never. It'll never happen. Um, but God sent a, a, a fairy godmother who came along and literally told Cinderella, I heard your wishes and I'm going to make sure that it happens. Well, anyway, Cinderella ends up at this, at this ball and the prince was there and he had already encountered every young lady who uh, had showed up at the ball and he told his mother literally nothing, none of these, none of these young ladies are suiting me. And uh, Cinderella showed up in a, a, a beautiful gown with glass slippers and all eyes were on her. And that, uh, that prince looked up and made his way over to Cinderella. And they danced and danced and danced again. And needless to say, all the other women were green with envy. Uh, but she kind of snapped his heart. The fairy godmother told uh, Cinderella that uh, you need to be home by 12 midnight if not you're going to go back to your original self you won't be dressed in the gown anymore the glass slippers when Cinderella looked up she was dancing with the prince and it was 12 midnight so you better believe she took off <laughs> and when she took off one of her glass slippers was left behind um he was pretty disturbed by that, but he went throughout that city from door to door looking, and nobody's feet uh, would fit that slipper. Um, and finally, he came to the house of the stepmother, uh, Cinderella's stepmother, and um, she thought assuredly it would be one of her daughters, even though she knew they didn't own the slipper. He tried... Uh, their foot in their feet in the glass slipper and none of it uh, their feet did not match did not fit and finally uh, Cinderella came down and uh, the the stepmother said surely not you and the prince tried the shoe on Cinderella's feet and guess what 
it was a perfect it was a perfect uh, fit he knew that she was the one we live in a we live in a day and time where we're sending all kinds of messages um, we're sending all kinds of messages but let me say this one of the greatest morals of this story is that sometimes you have to become your own hero yeah you're placed in situations Cinderella did not ask you know to be in this situation her mother had died and her father had remarried so she was um, in a very precarious situation that she did not ask for uh, and sometimes in life you'll find yourself in those situations and and I'm sure there were moments when she was hurt and she had to cry but she persevered and she literally became her own hero uh, and when I think about us as women other messages come to mind number one I think in a way we all want to be rescued um, and not in a bad way um, no matter how strong no matter how powerful I think we all look for a Prince Charming somebody just to come along and and sweep us off our feet and sometimes we're swept in different ways you know um, sometimes it's just uh, a friendship or a bond or a relationship or or to feel safe or secure um, or, or two is better than one when you have the right one. I think as women, we all kind of look for that, whether we admit it or not. We all desire to be rescued. Um, number two, we all desire to be seen as worthy. See, the, the stepmother and the stepsisters didn't treat Cinderella as, as if she was worthy. But this gentleman, this, this Prince Charming, this knight in shining armor, uh, treated her as if she was worthy. You know how worthy feels. Uh, you, you, you go out on a date or, or, or you go to dinner with your husband and he, um, he tells you don't open the car door because he wants to open it for you. Or he allows you to enter the door to the restaurant first. Uh, he notices that you're cold and he takes off his jacket. He, he gives it to you. You know how, how it is when somebody makes you feel worthy. Uh, uh, some some uh, significant other, husband, boyfriend, boo, whatever, you, you, you catch them staring at you in a way that nobody else does. It makes you feel worthy. Um, and the third thing is uh, I think that whether we admit it or not, <laughs> whether we um, whether we're playing the lotto or uh, we're off into Bitcoin or, um, or or something business, I think we're all looking for a, just just a lucky break, you know, <laughs> just something to come along and change the trajectory, make life so much easier, you know. I think we're all looking for that, whether whether we admit it or not. Uh, and we look for it in different ways, uh, just looking for a break, you know. I was listening, uh, Beyonce has a new song out. What is that song called? Ah, I said I was going to remember it. I listened to it on last night. Let me tell you, I was, I was blown away. Um, and if you know the name of this song, type it in the chat box. And she talked about... Um, you're stressed, you know. Uh, these jobs have made things so difficult, you know. <laughs> Quit your job. Take a break. <laughs> I was like, no, she didn't. But she did, you know. Those were the actual lyrics. Uh, of course, you know, we have to break my soul. Harriet Ware. I knew somebody was going to uh, know the name of that song. It's called Break My Soul. Talk about an anthem for women. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting you do that unless you have a master plan. <laughs> but Beyonce said, that job is stressing you out. Quit that. Don't let people do that to you. <laughs> I thought that was so powerful. <laughs> but let me get back to it because my time is always almost out. When we think about women and, and Cinderella and, and what she represented and, and how that 
uh, this this knight in shining armor, this prince was enamored by her. I couldn't help but think of uh, uh, women and, and what we do sometimes for attention, whether we admit it or not. Uh, we're all off into this authentic, authentic, uh, authenticity talk, um, but sometimes we show up differently in the world. Uh, and you really see it on social media. Um, for attention, we may dress provocative or do things that are revealing. You know what revealing means. I mean, the short tops and the low cut tops and the short shorts and uh, form fitting clothing, just whatever we're doing. So yesterday, as I was meeting different women, and I saw them in these type of clothing, the short tops, the low cut tops, short shorts, form fitting clothing. I asked because I wanted to know, like, what does that mean? What does that represent? And I was thinking about this lesson for today. And here are some of the things that I heard uh, when I asked why, why do you choose to dress like that? And um, some of them said they do it to boost their confidence. It boosts their confidence. Some of them said that it showed their individuality. Um, one girl was <laughs> really honest. She said uh, it puts her in a higher in economic bracket. You know, I, I really should got her phone number. I want to talk to her more about that. Um, uh, a one young lady says it gives her more variety. Uh, one uh, young lady says she feels empowered when she does it. Um, one young lady says she's imitating her idols. And she talked about uh, uh, Nicki Minaj is one name she mentioned. Megan The Stallion, another name she mentioned. Uh, even Beyonce. I heard several different names. Um... One young lady says she does it to please others. And then one young lady just flat out told me because she can. She said, because I can. <laughs> because I can. And you know what? I didn't get mad at any of those answers. I just wanted um, to know why, um, why do we dress revealing and provocative? Um, and none of these women I w was talking to, I wasn't doing it all just to pass judgment, not to pass judgment. I was doing it because I wanted to have the information for this show uh, today. Let me go ahead and catch some of your comments. Uh, Giovanna says, make it plain for us, Sister Joey. Kendra says, so true. Uh, Marilyn Wartlaw says, yes. Elder Marguerite Coleman says, yes. Tiffany Tonsil says, yes. We all want that break. Absolutely. Thank you, Tiffany, for being honest. Uh, Kendra says, yep. Harriet Ware says, break my soul. That's the new song by Beyonce. Kendra Dublin says, sure do. Kendra is laughing. Okay. All right, then. <laughs> okay. So now I think you understand uh, this Cinderella syndrome that as women, I think we all kind of desire to be rescued. Uh, we all desire to to be seen as worthy, and 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 we're all looking for that lucky break. You may not call it luck; you may call it a blessed break, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. But I believe, I believe that um, how we dress speaks volumes as to who we are yes and you don't have to dress like me you dress like you but I love what the fairy godmother did see every I believe that every Ruth needs a Naomi and the stepmother was so wicked and ugly to Cinderella that God sent the fairy godmother he sent somebody so I guess my message to all the young ladies and older ladies, because we have some older ladies that do it too, that like to dress extremely revealing and provocative, and um, that if a Naomi approaches you, hear her out. I don't even think it's about judging you. Mm -mm. The world is going to do that already. It, it's not about judging you. It's about what the fairy godmother 
did for Cinderella. I'm going to take you to another level. Sometimes people can see things in you that you can't even see in yourself. Yeah. And because sometimes we are attention seeking. We think that if I wear the skirt that's too small or too short, you know, it's going to garner attention. It may give, get you the wolf whistle, but will it get you a husband? You know, those are the hard questions, you know, that we have to ask ourselves. And some, listen, married folk dress provocative too. So I don't, I don't want you to even think that I'm harping just on one group of people, but I'm looking at how the prince saw Cinderella. There were a lot of women there that day at that ball. He had eyes for only one, only one. He was so smitten by her. And I looked at all the Cinderella stories. She wasn't dressed in the short shorts and the low cut tops with the cleavage out and the short Daisy Dukes and the form-fitting clothes. That's not how she was dressed. She left something for the imagination. Yes, she did. Yeah. And ended up getting herself a husband out of the deal. So let me tell you something, sisters. Um, how you dress, it speaks volumes. Yeah. I'm not saying you're wrong, you're right, or you're indifferent. I'm saying let's look at things in a different way in a different light and culturally I want you to look at some pictures today look at your um, look at your Coretta Scott Kings uh, Jacqueline Onassis I mean these women were dressed to the tilt <laughs> and you didn't see nothing they were clean as the board of health yeah so it is about ethical integrity and moral intelligence and um, how you want people to view you. And we can say all day long, I don't care what other people think. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. We all want to be rescued. We all want to be seen as worthy. We all want a blessed break, a lucky break. Elder Me Marguerite Coleman says, uh, may God bless you all, my queen sisters. Thank you for your prayers. Tiffany says, facts. Kendra says, wolf whistle. It's true. That's how I was back in the day. <laughs> Dana Christie Brooks says, uh, yes, it does. Dress modestly. Harriet Ware says, covered in inappropriate tattoos. Oh, yeah. Kendra uh, Dublin says, yes, you do. <laughs> yes. Jennifer A. Catchin says, wonderful lesson. Thank you so much. I hope, you know, um, I, I, I did. I talked to God about every lesson, but I really talked to him about this one. You definitely don't want to lose anybody, and you don't ever want people to think um, that you're judging in any kind of way. It's not about judging. It is about us getting back to where we used to be. We used to be able to talk to one another, encourage one another, inspire one another, correct one another. We have to get back to that. Every Ruth needs a Naomi. You cannot make it through this life by yourself and land successfully. Somebody needs to be in your ear telling you, sweetheart, you don't, don't you think that's a little too revealing? Too short? Exposing too much? Showing too much? And, and you don't have to take her advice. But she certainly ought to be able to give it to you. My life has been changed tremendously because I had people in my ear. Yeah. Telling me things. And sometimes, Kendra, when they told me things at that moment, it, it hurt at the moment. Yeah. But I'm glad that my heart was open enough, you know, open enough because their words put me in a position to reach my destiny. Yeah. So people are not just saying things to hurt your feelings or to be cruel, I don't believe. Um, we have the power to turn this world upside down. Yeah. We have the power collectively 
if we just start embracing one another. Hear what the next person has to say, especially if he or she is trying to help you. Be humble. Be humble. We all desire to be rescued. I don't care who you are. We all desire to be seen as worthy. And we're all looking for that blessed and that lucky break. Listen, I hope you have a good weekend. I got to get out of here. <laughs> I got places to go, people to see, and things to do. Dana is here. Dana says, iron sharpens iron. I have had people in my ear too. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I've had people in my ear. Marilyn Wartloss says, always be the example. I dress up and I see young girls at the school change the way they dress. For sure. For sure. I've done that too. Uh, in that classroom and uh, when I had the group home dress a certain way and uh, sometimes it seems like they wasn't getting it uh, Sister Marilyn but over time yeah over time I saw it change yeah the skirt came down a little yeah she knew that she didn't have to expose her cleavage not to be not to be uh, not to be beautiful listen y'all I want you to have a great weekend. Help somebody. Help somebody. God's going to send somebody your way. You're on an assignment this morning. Don't forget that. Um, Elder Marguerite says, beautiful lesson. Um, Merle, uh, Tiffany says, when we make ourselves available, God fills us with wisdom you need. Yes, indeed. This was a different uh, This was a different kind of language, and a different kind of uh, message. And let me tell you why. Um, here recently, I mean, I've been... Every time I go into the store, the gas station, no matter where I am, I'm just seeing us half-dressed. I mean, almost down to nothing. Uh, in restaurants, at buffets, you know, with, with body parts almost touching the food. And I'm like, how did we get here? What, what, what is graceful? and beautiful about that so I'm encouraging every time I meet a young lady <laughs> and I see she's out of order <laughs> I'm, you know I'm going to whisper in her ear and I'm going to talk to her because I love her yeah I love her and I want her to love herself enough to value her body your body is the temple it is the temple of God yeah we got to leave something for the imagination. God. We can't do it like that. <laughs> we can't do it like that. So each one, reach one. Yeah. Let's encourage our girls and let them know that your body, your body is God's temple. He has a special plan for you. Yes, indeed. He has a special plan for you. Listen, have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you Monday. Take care and God bless you.